Realme is crowdsourcing ideas for copying Apple's d -d -d dynamic island. This was only a matter of time, Will. You're not surprised one bit. Someone had to do it. You're over there eating your lunch saying, yep. Yep. Yeah. What'd you have for lunch today, Will? I had buttered chicken. What? <sighs> yeah. Well, never mind the dynamic island. That was way more important. Uh huh. That was some dynamic chicken. <laughs> it was delicious. Always a big fan. Well, listen, as soon as Apple's keynote ended, I started seeing clips of dynamic island like behaviors. Mm. Companies getting to work, skins and things going wild. Mm -hmm. I saw it on social media. I was on social media. Mm. I saw it. Uh, I guess now it's going to get official. It's only, it's only a matter of time, this stuff. And this is what the teaser looked like. It was circular. And it says, what's your dream island like? And that's courtesy of Realme. And they're just going to straight up say it. They say, we'll do an island for you. Yeah, we need ideas, though. They're like, you like that island over there? We'll do an island. What kind of island do you need? Yeah. Chinese smartphone maker Realme is asking its loyal fans for ideas on how to copy Apple's dynamic island from the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro Max. In a challenge, Rumi says, the UI around the camera hole could morph into different shapes and sizes to display incoming phone calls, alerts, notifications, and more precisely like Apple's dynamic island. The company finds this idea quite appealing and has decided to turn its loyal fans to its loyal fans for ideas and suggestions on how such software feature could be implemented on Realme devices. Fans are asked to submit images. Wow. They really, illustrations, they really want you to design it. It's an art contest. You could win that contest, Will. Guy like you? I don't know. You got those skills, man for all seasons? Utility man? What don't you do, Will? That's a better question. What don't you do? What is off limits for you? Because it seems like when it comes to expertise, it's <laughs> there's nothing. I, I can't bring up anything. And you're like, I know about it. I'm an expert in it. I'm a programmer. I'm a doctor. I'm a lawyer, etc. <laughs> so give me an example of somewhere that's, that that's not the case, where you're not a seasoned veteran, um, where you need to improve. Curling. You're talking about the sport of curling. Yeah. I want to improve. You, want, you know what? That might be right up your alley. I haven't tried, but I would like to play. It's like, we should go. I was, oh, I'll go. I'll curl. Yeah? Okay. I'll bowl. I'll go bowling. Yeah, have you ever gone bowling? Uh huh. Yeah, that's fun. You ever got a strike? Sure. Did you celebrate? Big, yeah, big fan of strikes. You, you, what'd you do? Raise a hand in the air? Uh, yeah, waved it like I didn't care. In an image attached to the challenge, Realme showcases a hole punch cutout with a yellow glow caption. What's your dream island? They say developers will use the winner's idea and consider it for possible implementation in the future. They're like, show us your island. We build the island. You work for us for free because you're a fan. <laughs> yeah, a loyal fan. And the fans are like, well, you know what? I just want to see my island out there living. Uh, the dynamic island is not 100% polished at the moment, but I guess iOS in general, since it's, uh, the latest 16 is having a couple of bugs and things, Will. People were upset. They saw the, we, we got the last video and it's the shaky cam. What was I calling it? Jello, stimulated jello. Sure, yeah. So you have the stimulated jello and people are like, Lou, I can't, this is a, not a small deal. I can't post my snaps and this and that. So it's a big deal. Well, I just, I don't know. I feel like may, maybe people read me the wrong way there. I just mean it's going to be patched, hopefully, quickly. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe uh, maybe it won't be patched super quickly. And maybe people, they got their fancy new device and their friends are making fun of them because they look like everything they're posting is stimulated jello. Mm. So whatever. I, I have sympathy for I have sympathy for everyone. Sure. Well. Everyone, even those that have shaky cams mm. that they never asked for mm -hmm. on their latest fancy, polished, stainless steel, surgical grade iPhone 14 Pro Max. Pro Maximum. Does the iPhone 14 car crash detection system really work? A YouTuber puts this feature to the test. Those, uh, those YouTubers. 
Always putting things to the test, aren't they? Yeah. Who would do it if the YouTubers didn't? Mm -hmm. YouTuber Tech Racks posted a six minute, 27 minute, a six minute, 27 second. Oh, that's weird the way they wrote that. Mm -hmm. Six 27 minute video in a car with no one inside. He tried to simulate a few car crash accidents. While small bumps aren't enough to trigger this feature, he was able to show crash detection working twice with the iPhone 14 Pro. Uh, te uh, tech racks is always destroying the phones. We'll stick them in a on a frying pan or a barbecue or smash a lot of drop tests. Yeah, all these things. He, I didn't see him for a while. He's back, I guess. And in this case, the need uh, for destruction actually kind of useful here. Yeah, he rigged up his car or a car. The, yeah, he didn't drive it. Yeah, a car. Look at this beauty. What is that? A, a like Buick a, or something? What is that? Yeah. Why is and, there an electric skateboard in there? Wow. And a boosted board. I think. So the boosted board is <laughs> somehow it's um, lifting the brake, the lifting, accelerators. Or, okay. Okay. Sure. Cool. Yeah. That's a nice little rig. GoPro in the back. Out in a out in a field. Do you think they got a permit for this? Well, um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, you never know. You never yeah. know. You're just not getting that feeling. Whoa, they almost hit the... Go back. It's a little close to the tower over there. Give me a little... Play a little bit of this here. Am I crazy or no? Maybe. maybe. No, they're, they're pretty far away. Maybe I'm crazy. No, go forward a bit. I just... I felt as though... Go forward a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it was back. Go back a little bit more. Oh, gosh. Just got to get to the bottom of this. More. Or look at this one on the left. Look at this tower on the left right here. Oh, yeah. That's a little... <laughs> it's a bit hairy. You best be steering because you take that baby down. A little power outage for so, you. So, yeah, I guess they did a couple tests with the car itself. So what were they crashing into? Um, some old cars. Oh, okay. So they strapped the iPhone in the back uh, headrest. Yeah. Uh, to simulate, I guess, the phone being in the car. Although it could have been on the seat or something, right? I yeah, I guess they didn't. Like I guess they didn't want it flying across the car because they're trying to imagine it would be in a pocket. Mm. If you had it just sitting on the seat, it would fly across the car for sure, triggering it. And I think what they probably were hoping to discover is exactly the moment that the SOS would be triggered. And the cameras pointed at it, I guess. So yeah, showing the time. So you're showing the legitimacy of the test. Listen, we can't yeah. question. The testing methods of tech racks. You understand? Yeah, he knows. His He's stuff, got it man. all figured out. What exactly how you have to do this type of thing, and so, okay. they yeah. prove the feature works on the. Uh, I presume it'll work the same way on the watch. These are useful things. These are useful technologies, man. We'll take it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even going that fast, but it was able to detect it twice. We'll take it, Will. These are useful technologies, and we're going to take it. You know, we're going to take it. Get in the crash, get the emergency services, saves your life. Have the heart attack, watch, it saves your life. Science on YouTube. In, you the, in the wilderness, saves your life. Uh, because you're in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the night. Helicopters. I don't know why you're there, but you're there. And you don't want to be there anymore. No. You have an Apple Watch or an SOS. You're no, upset. I do want to be there if I have the oh. Apple Watch. Oh, okay, cool. Save my life, right? You want to be in the middle of the desert? Well, I mean, I what would just, bring uh, you to the middle of the desert? I don't know. <laughs> what, are looking, what are you looking for? Uh, uh, scorpions or something? Uh, what are you doing out there? You put me there. Yeah, what are you I don't want to yeah. be there. No, what are you doing out there? Um, I guess looking for water. <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean? Uh, you see what I mean? <laughs> What's going on out there? I mean, I, I, I also want to explore some things, but the desert, it, the desert doesn't care about you, Will. The oasis. I'm looking for the oasis. Okay, so you're out there looking for an oasis. You know you could yeah. just go on vacation or something because they got I all could, types but of... But you put me there, so I need to find... Uh... Well, because Apple put people there in the commercial. They got the okay. people hiking in the desert by themselves. Are you supposed to do that? Are you supposed to hike by yourself out there? Like, what are the hiking rules with this? I understand, like, you got the guy who's climbing the mountain with no ropes mm. by himself. You know Honold. what I'm talking Yeah. Alex Honnold. Talking about Honnold. Yeah. And I'm watching on Netflix, and 
And it's it's like a psychology to it where he can't he can't really tell everybody because he's kind of got to build himself up. It's got to be the right peaceful moment, and and he's got to be like fully Zen mode, whatever. Uh huh. And he finally goes for it on his own. I would assume that for the heavy duty hikers out there, there's some sort of high that comes from the risk factor. Some of the things you're approaching. Oh, definitely, yeah, uh, yeah. And so that's they they want the SOS. They don't want to be with a friend or a group that could just you know, help them, save them, whatever. Uh -huh. They want Apple. What was the guy him? in the movie sawing off the arm? He's in the crevasse. James Franco? Yeah. The actor, not the actual person. Cutting. Yeah. Was he alone as well? He was, yeah. You see what I'm saying here, Will? You ever try anything like that? I would not. Weren't you at Coachella? I was with friends. <laughs> and that's, uh, yes, that was in the middle of the desert. No, I know. I'm, 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 I'm having fun. Well, yeah, I'm just having fun. I know you're busy. I know you're a busy guy. I know you got a busy day today, tight schedule. You can go to the next one, no problem. iPhone production in India will hit 25 percent of global output by 2025, says analyst. Shout out India. Shout out everybody in this community that community that's in India. Probably a little bit later when, uh, when you're watching this. Yes, been taking over the manufacturing scene variety of incentives and so forth and of course apple also reaching to diversify its production moving into not just india but other places as well uh the premium devices what i've read in the past that they haven't at least at the same time as they've been manufactured elsewhere they haven't been pumped out of in indian factories but maybe that changes iPhone production in India will increase to around 25% of to total global output by 2025. According to a new analyst report, the report suggests a similar percentage of other Apple products will be made outside China by the same year. Apple is massively dependent on China as a manufacturing assembly hub. The large ecosystem of suppliers that have grown up in the country has made production of Apple products a tightly integrated operation, which is difficult to replace, replicate elsewhere. COVID happened. Uh, things got... A little bit squirrely, well, mm -hmm. to say the least. If you were trying to pump out iPhones and everything is shut down and you start to realize, okay, where is the bottleneck? Like, where are the breakage points that we should be aware of? And how can we diversify to avoid that in the future? Mm -hmm. Shareholders, Wall Street, phones, Apple, Tim, etc. That's, sure. that's how those meetings go. Mm-hmm. When Apple first started iPhone production in India, it was only the original iPhone SE and other model and only models for sale within the country. That's right. I remember talking about this old Lou later days. They started with the iPhone SE and it was only the iPhone SE that was going to be purchased in India. Mm -hmm. And it was because when you're importing those devices that aren't assembled a certain portion of it in India, you pay those tariffs and so forth. And it gets really expensive. You look at the prices of the current generation flagship iPhones in India. It's pretty staggering stuff. We're going to talk about it more at a later date. Mm -hmm. um, but that's changing. Now, increasingly, you're seeing flagship models actually being made in India, and you're seeing more export coming out of India. Uh, iPhone 14, I don't believe, is currently being made there, but of course, as time passes, it probably will be. It has previously been reported that next year, production of the iPhone 15 will begin simultaneously in China and India something Apple had initially hoped would begin with the iPhone 14. So there you go. This could be the last generation where the new model, the early adoption is strictly China devices. And now you might have that mix in there of Indian produced devices. It's like a, it's like a tipping point. So it was a JP Morgan analyst note that brought up all this information. And the paper says that the analyst concern. Analyst concerned has an 80% reliability rating, if you want to believe that, 80%. That's like when it says it's going to rain, there's an 80% chance of rain. Are yeah. you prepared for rain? Pretty yeah. pretty much. Yeah. 50%, you're not. 50%, you're like, I'll take my chances. 20%, it's a sunny day half the time. Sure. 80% mm -hmm. of the time. I'd bring an umbrella, 50%. You bring umbrella for 50 you bring umbrella for 40. A hoodie. Yeah, you see how that goes? Yeah. There's some key numbers in there. Uh -huh. You bring anything for 20? No. You don't. 
thunderstorm, you stay home. Sure. Th thunderstorm warning, you look out the window, don't you? Yeah. Hurricane, tornado. You and Otis, you just look out the window, don't you? Yeah, eating ice cream. Shout out India. Shout out everybody uh, watching from India. Looks like you're going to be making, exporting a couple more iPhones in the future. Yeah. Canceled LG Rollable shows up in another hands-on video, and it looks fantastic. LG, where'd you go? Where'd you go, LG? Send me one of these. Let's kickstart it. Let's get this thing going again. They made some good phones. The, the video past. starts by showcasing unique retail packaging for the LG Rollable, which slides open. Like the device's display on the inside, you get a device, some paperwork, a charging brick, and a USB cable. Yeah, look at the way the O extends. They were so ready to go with this Rollable. Yeah, they got the they, packaging as well. Before they crashed the whole thing. According to the video, the LG Rollable packs Qualcomm Snapdragon 888. Okay. 12 gigs RAM. That's how close they got. 256 storage, 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Device features 6.8 inch flexible P OLED display. On the front, it expands into a large 7.4 inch screen. Rolling, man, because no seam will. It looks kind of uh, flat, too. Like thin. It's not too it bad. It sure does look, look thin. Is there uh, an image here of the unroll? Okay, I see. So it's not really fold aspect ratio no it gets fatter but not crazy fat and it's able to stay really slim but the key the big key no seams, seams. and everybody cares about the seams well yeah look at this look at this video look how ready to go this thing is i need to get my hands on this look at this guy <laughs> He got his hands on it. Wow, there's a lot. He's of got a G. Work. That's a GPU in the background. Yeah. You see that? Okay, let's just go to the roll action. If you can, well, there's the packaging with the roll action. Where's that roll action? There we go. Here we go. He's already rolled there. Here we go. Oh, it's Whoa. motorized. You better stop that. You don't even have to pull on it. A three finger swipe. It's just a swipe and a roll, and you got yourself a big screen. And the aspect ratio, if you flip it into landscape, pretty good for video. So this is unfortunate. They Look, they took chances. They had the crazy flipping thing with the dual screen, yeah. the LG wing, and then they were going here next. They were doing interesting things mm -hmm. and wild things. So it is a bit unfortunate and sad that they're not involved at all things are going to get more boring that's not boring i don't care maybe you're that's not gonna, cool that's the problem maybe you're not going to buy it but it's, you can't call it boring no get all that extra real estate wow i'm <laughs> i'm sad that it doesn't exist well look at the way the the software well it does just pretty smoothly well i you see just got to get it well a few of them exist i mean that it doesn't exist as a product in the market that people can actually experience that's why I mean, Mew and I might be able to get our hands on it. If you can, for sure, I would want to do a video on it. So if you can, then let's do that. You or LG or whoever. Gotcha. Volvo's EX90 electric SUV will have laser sensors and cameras that can detect drunk driving. Ooh, drunk driving from the vehicle in front of you? Or you? Or your, no, that's what it must mean. You. You? Yeah. Detecting your drunkness? I think so. Oh, wow. Volvo announced it'll unveil a new flagship electric vehicle, EX90 SUV, November 9th. Current flagship, it will replace in the run-up before the announcement the Swedish automaker teased a number of interesting features. Uh, AI-powered software to prevent fatal traffic collisions. One of the most advanced sensor sets on the market, eight cameras, five radars, 16 ultrasonic sensors, and cutting-edge LiDAR. Mounted on the roof of the EX90 will aid the dri driver in avoiding exterior obstacles, while two cameras inside the vehicle will monitor the driver's eye behavior to determine whether they are paying attention or even perhaps impaired. Okay, so it's looking at me. Well, that's, yeah. yeah. Some, some other cars are already looking at you. Tesla asks you to opt in. and mm. um, Yeah, I guess if your eyes are off the road, how, how would you know that a collision was coming, impaired or not impaired? In that moment, you kind of are. And then I wonder what it would do if it had predicted uh, effectively that you had been drinking. It's shutting down completely. You're going nowhere. 
how long are you going to wait? It's like one of those ones where you have people who are alcoholics and they have to blow into the tube mm -hmm. in order to start the car. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a more sophisticated version of that, eye tracking version of that. Yeah, and I guess less invasive than tracking your blood alcohol level. Blowing into the thing. Yeah, that's not a good look in the car. Mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to live it's your like life. A tube comes up. Yeah, you're like, trying to live your life. It's obviously yeah. not a good look to have that. Depending on the driver's attention, the EX90 will be able to take action when needed. If the driver is distracted, the cameras will pick up on it, and the vehicle will issue a series of warnings intended to bring the focus back on the road. If the driver still isn't responding, the vehicle will begin to slow down, eventually coming to a full stop on the side of the road and activating the hazard lights. So there you go. That's frustrating to me. Oh, it's so frustrating. Because you're actually driving first, and then you have to pull over if you get detected? Well, it will pull you over. You're not... Sure. You're not pulling over yourself. But then again, it's just like, I feel like before the driver starts the car, it would sense that they'd be impaired. No, no, no. No? Nope. Okay. Well. That's, the, that's what blowing into the thing achieves that. Yeah. This will not do that. But listen, but I'll cool tell you from driving these electric cars, I'll tell you right now, or never mind electric cars, any car with some sort of adaptive cruise. Oh, how dare you? Any car with any type of adaptive cruise or smart system for driving itself on the highway, yeah. there is a variety of ways that they prompt you to pay attention. There's a variety of different approaches. And it got me thinking, what is the right amount? Because if it's happening too frequently, it doesn't feel autonomous at all and, and, and you... You begin to become frustrated with the tech. If it's constantly like, touch the, do this. It do should th be invisible, but up to a certain point. Exactly. Where you have to intervene. It, and, and that's the question. What is the right amount of time? Yeah. Because the Tesla feels too frequent. It's really? just touch the thing, touch the thing. Like, oh, yeah. okay, okay. And I, and I know they want you to like rest your hand basically on, on the, but there's a variety. They, they're not all doing it the same way. I'll tell you that right now. It, it, maybe i don't know who who sets the amount of time that's required i don't know if it's a highway traffic safety people or if there's some if it's somewhat up to the automaker but even the way in which they prompt you is different like how quickly does a, a, an initial warning become a severe warning become a you no longer have that option for the remainder of the trip mm. you feel like you're getting scolded by your your ai yeah, it's uh, very punishing, but they 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 probably had it in place like in the beta for people to test, and they found out that's the right timing. Well, but you listen, so far, people were snoozing. You know how it goes. Well, people were snoozing. They yeah. were sleeping. People would take advantage, and then you all of a sudden you have to have these new things implemented, and you know how it goes. Human beings they're gonna they're gonna mess around. But maybe for for <laughs> someone like you. Tesla could implement some sort of option where it's well, here's like, what oh, they, maybe a longer time for this guy. May, or, yeah, like a reliability rating or something. Yeah, and yeah, they have a beta and for it's that. it's automatic. They have a beta for that. Okay. So they will tell you your safety score in the app. Right. But it's not like fully formed portion sure, of the product yeah, yeah, yeah. yet. But maybe you're right. Maybe eventually really high safety score, you're going to be able to not interact with it as frequently and let it kind of do more of its own thing. That'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Twitch. Oh my God, Twitch. What's it? But, yeah. Twitch is... Is there ever nice news about Twitch? Like, do you ever... Can you recall a headline where amazing, amazingly nice things happening? I mean, I guess that's just not headlines in general. It's always got to be some controversy, so... <coughs> I guess that makes sense. Anyway, uh, Twitch has banned major game gaming, sorry, gambling sites after streamers threatened strike. The streamers yeah. themselves did not like this thing. Uh, I guess the the thinking was that they had that they were essentially influencing people could and 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 persuading people to gamble. Mm -hmm. And to what degree there's a responsibility on the end of the streamer to kind of manage that. Obviously, gambling has regulation. Yeah. Because it's a somewhat dangerous activity for some people. I guess liability 
to Twitch themselves as well? I don't know. The, the key, at least uh, initially, looks to be targeting ungoverned international online gambling. Mm. If you read it, I mean, okay, here we go. Gambling content on Twitch has been a big topic of discussion in the community and something we've been actively reviewing since our last policy update in this area. Today, we want to update you on our plans. While we prohibit sharing links or referral codes to all sites that include sl slots, roulette, or dice games, we've seen some circumvent those rules and expose our community to potential harm. So we'll be making a policy update October 18th. October? Why October 18th? Okay. That's weird. Wouldn't you do it immediately if it was bad? October 18th to prohibit streaming of gambling sites that include slots, roulette, or dice games that aren't licensed either in the U.S. or other jurisdictions that provide sufficient consumer protection. These sites will include stake.com, but that's Drake's site that he's streaming, and I think he's a part owner or something, and there's a crypto element, and I don't even know where the company's registered. Some Caribbean or something? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, rollbit.com, dualbits.com, and rubet.com. However, we may identify others as we move forward. We will continue to allow websites to focus on sports betting, fantasy sports, and poker. That's interesting, isn't it? Those gamblings are fine. Yeah. These gamblings, not fine. I kind of get it. There's definitely levels to it. We'll share specifics on the updates to our gambling policy soon, including a full policy language to make sure everyone is clear on our new rules before they take effect on October 18th. The gambling thing, it obviously exploded. I saw an ad on TV watching a sporting event where probably a Jays game, and it was about gambling responsibly, like how inside your sports betting app it would – prompt you to take a break or to take some time off gambling did you see this no and i was sitting there thinking how is this good for business or is this mandated in some way or is it impending doom where everyone's feeling this is getting out of hand and that there's going to be reg more regulation incoming if it continues to it. run it's rampant yeah. and people are ruining their lives i don't know if that's exactly what's going on but i found this particular ad to be a curious one Anyway, I guess what's interesting here is that Twitch streamers, prominent Twitch streamers themselves had noticed this trend and had kind of organized against it. Mm -hmm. Here's a quote from Pokimane. We did it, y'all. They got 300,000 people expressing support against gambling streams in a single day. Public pressure tweets raising awareness. It all matters. Yeah. That news was blowing up. Uh, there was... Funny business going on. Uh, streamers themselves had had been swindled. Viewers had been swindled. The gambling thing is r risky business, but it is. It does seem Twitch is constantly embroiled in something, uh -huh. having to govern something. It's a real. It's tough when the brand image is always like this, mm. and it's like don't don't you find it to be so different than like YouTube or Instagram or something? I mean, they have their own image issues at times. Yeah. But Twitch... Well, if you have like the, you know, the the most popular streamer, which is, I don't know, XQC, and he's doing, you know, live streaming gambling for hours, that's not really a good um, <laughs> look for Twitch or live streaming in general. Uh, imagine on YouTube side, Mr. Beast is gambling for like no, no, no. a 24 hour uh, live I get stream. it, but, but, but Will, this gets really squirrely about gambling, like whatever. Because they, you know, you saw them say sports betting is okay, or you saw them say uh, poker is okay. Like you might watch poker for entertainment and you have yeah. no problem yourself mm -hmm. with it. Or you might watch sports and bet on sports and have no problem with it. Right. There's some combination of factors. The way you're doing it, how you're describing it, who you're targeting. Is it young people? Is it adults? Are there any disclaimers? Anytime you see an ad, please bet responsibly this and that uh -huh. going on. Mm -hmm. So the, the formatting really seems to matter. Not just the activity, but the formatting. 
who is it going out to? Like, who is the fan base? What are the disclaimers? And how is, what is the, like, what is the proposition? What is the, I think like with, with roulette or something, it's so. Well, it's robotic to a certain point, right? Slots, roulette. Dice. I'm always skeptical of those things. I, I'm inherently well, you should be. I'm inherently skeptical of those things. No, I mean online. Well, when you're dealing with like Well, I mean online. Play. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like if I see somebody promoting one of these sites or posting it on social media, I'm like, okay, well, the company could have a relationship with that individual, right? Isn't that something to be concerned with in which case their profile may have a higher likelihood and i know this stuff is strictly prohibited and illegal but it would be difficult to police it and figure out how legitimate these results are and if people are even seeing a proper timeline of activities and outcomes and then they're getting a false sense of win potential or win percentage or whatever i'm not saying that's going on i'm not make. i'm not W w waging I'm not I'm not I'm not launching a formal complaint or an accusation against anybody I don't know mm. but I'm just talking about an apprehension that I would have and I think a lot of other people would have around that representation and the legitimacy of that representation but anyway this looks like consumer protection plays a big role because they're saying the Sites that are getting targeted are the ones that are not in the U.S. or a jurisdiction that provides that sufficient customer protection. Whatever that means, a number of disclaimers, limits probably for deposits in a certain period of time, certain amount of gaming that you're allowed to do in a certain amount of time, and so on and so forth. And truthfully, even if you're a responsible player, you want these type of things to be in place because... It can all get screwed up if some people ruin it. And by ruin it, I mean don't behave responsibly. Yeah. So you kind of, as much as it might bug you, if the whole thing goes fully haywire, it could affect anybody who enjoys these products responsibly is what I'm trying to say. But then there's the Twitch angle on it. And obviously that's a different piece where... Twitch streamers often have seem to have problems with things going on on Twitch, controversies and so forth. And they, it's seemingly they don't have the correct connection point where they can have a change take place without making a big public discussion take place. And then it has to turn into uh, tw Twitch's brand taking a hit in public. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe they put out the statement and they appear to be responsive and maybe that is perceived as positive. Like, hey, Twitch can get call called out and, and make a change. And so we have this two-way street where we can kind of make this community what we all agree to. Anyway, obviously for some creators, this was a very big deal. And they felt that the brand... And their own brand getting caught up and tied up with it that it, that there was some sort of negative effect there sure and now they've been able to spin that around but i'm sure just like everything else in life there's a counterpoint and there's somebody who disagrees absolutely and wants to get on there and wants to get on stake and wants to play some roulette right now for their audience and was maybe making a lot of money and maybe a lot of people were watching that and getting entertained yeah it's all about trying to do it in a responsible way. And I don't know that there is a way. This is a yeah. very squirrely topic. I, you know. And for the record, you know, playing roulette on Twitch is, you know, it's fine. It's just got to be Well, not anymore by the looks way. of it. Not anymore yeah. by the looks of it. Slots, roulette, and dice games that aren't licensed in the U.S. But it's weird. Okay, so what if it's a slot, roulette, or dice game licensed in the U.S.? But I guess there's maybe not many of those. Maybe that's the point. We'll continue to our websites focus on sports betting, fantasy sports, and poker. It's interesting. Those ones, for some reason, feel more competitive or legitimate or something, I guess. Establ established. What's established? <laughs> well, I, I, I like poker has an entertainment scene. Uh -huh. You have prominent players uh -huh. inside of that scope. Like, should they really not be able to stream? Like, let's say you're a professional poker player. Like, what if you're a professional chess player? 
Mm. Right? You're in a competitive event. People want to pay attention to that. They want to watch that. You're great at what you do. Mm -hmm. Is it the same as somebody you know, doing a roulette stream for six or seven hours, spinning that? Mm. Depositing, spinning, linking? Like, I don't know. They're definitely not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Well, this seems like an ongoing uh, discussion. Yeah. It seems like this might be just the first step. And, and 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 full disclosure from my end, I I don't know every in and out. I don't know all the accusations. I I, I realize that a lot of it was prompted from one individual who had f defrauded people out of money mm. t in order to um, support their own gambling habit, mm -hmm. and then things started to trickle down from there. But yeah, I think it's going to be de debated for a while now. Mm -hmm. Uh, PSVR 2. Yeah. Different note here. This is just a trailer that just got released. Uh -huh. um, showing off the capabilities and features of the PSVR, hmm. the, the new one. Um, so that's kind of like how it looks like, which is kind of cool. Yeah, the controllers. Much more like, uh, what is it? Who has those controllers? Like that HTC? Vi yeah. Valve Index. Or Valve. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, those yeah, I mean, sphere-like kind of cool. controllers. Mm -hmm. Is this headset going to be heavy, though? What do you think? I don't think so. Ooh, 4K HDR display? Okay. Because I imagine a lot of kids will be wearing it. Vibrant worlds to life. Eye tracking. Lovely. Detects and follows your vision. Yeah, this is cool. Okay. We'll take that. How do you say that word? Go back. Right there on the left. How do you say that word? Foveated? Foveated rendering. But isn't yeah. it for field of view? So wouldn't you say F-O-V-ated? Because you would say F-O-V, right? I don't know. 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 Yeah. I thought there would be like That's cool. Periods, so it's, it's, it's rendering the part that you're looking at yeah. for performance. What does it matter? The other it kind of blurs out the yes. uh, kind of like a peripheral... Kind of like your real life. Yeah. Your real eyes. 110 degree field of view. Yeah. What do you think about like PlayStation based VR? Why is it that it seems the adoption is not major? Maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. Is it our vision of like what a game console is? And then that somehow VR is something different? Because I know a lot of people with PlayStations... And I rarely see this accessory, like the previous version. Yeah. Well, I think um, support, like game companies should make more games, mm -hmm. but it's also like a money thing. It, it was expensive. Well, how much was it? Um, I believe it was 300, 400 bucks. All right. So almost as much as the console itself. Yeah. But still not to the extent of those premium headsets. No. Hmm. Huh. So when does this one come out? Um. Or they, they didn't. They didn't say they yet. Didn't say. Oh, okay. Well, it seems if they're promoting it at this moment that maybe it's not too far off. Oh, price reveal, please. I'm guessing it's going to be 500 plus, knowing Sony. That's really expensive. Yeah. Well, so that might be a key factor there, and you're still tethered to the console, and you can only play PlayStation games. Right. Right, so interesting. I mean, good luck with it. Um, I'm excited. Did you ever play that No Man's Sky game? Uh, they were just showing. I have, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? It's gotten a lot better hmm. than like the first reveal. Oh, this is like so, a completely different game. So this is uh, pulling on the other element with the controllers, where you have the tension, the amount of tension. Like yeah. they're using a bow and arrow. They always use a bow and arrow, arrow as an example for sure, tension, yeah, yeah, the yeah. feeling of tension. Mm -hmm. So they have that strong haptics, those strong haptics. Yeah, whatever. I'll give it a crack. Yeah, should try it out. Pretty cool. All right, last one. Getty Images bans AI-generated art over copyright concerns. The stock photo provider says the technology is too risky. Ooh. Good Lord. What a can of worms that is. Yeah. So people started submitting 
I'm guessing AI generated art mm. to like licensing. Mm -hmm. so, oh my god. And then they're like, wait, we don't know who this belongs to because this is like a merging of all these other elements that were pulled from other people's creative work. Uh huh. And what a rabbit hole we find ourselves in. Who who owns what? When everything is remixed and re-rendered and oh. Don't expect to see stock photos from Dolly and other AI image creation tools. Getty Images chief Craig Peters told The Verge in a statement that his company has banned AI-generated art over the potential for copyright disputes. Well, that's the thing. All it takes is a dispute. They don't. Ha it doesn't have to be proven. It can be enough of a nuisance. You have a lawyer sitting over there. They're just like, oh, God, just never mind. But what if it's like a really good AI-generated picture that... You don't even know if a photographer took it, you know, and then someone disputes it and then, you know, the artist would be like, hey, I took this picture or maybe they didn't. The dispute is That's enough. That's a can of worms. Yeah, the dispute is enough, whether it's justified or not. Yeah. There are unaddressed rights issues with the technology, the CEO said, and this would help customers minimize the risk of their finances and re reputations. He didn't say if Getty had already encountered legal trouble with AI generated content. He noted there was an extremely limited amount of that material on the platform. The company is teaming with the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity to create filters for AI-produced material and is asking users to flag anything that slips through. Oh, my God. Yeah. Rivals like Shutterstock are already screening at least some imagery. Good luck. They got to be training these things like crazy in order to pick this stuff up. Some of it is quite convincing. And all of a sudden, you hop on there under Shutterstock or whatever. You get the you get the license to use the image. Somebody sees it in your content. They go, actually, this is using elements from my original or whatever. Now you have the dispute. Now you're in a full-on court case saying, you didn't make that. Dolly made that. Uh-huh. And they're like, who's Dolly? And you're like, it's my pal. <laughs> My buddy. And it's original at this point. It's like yeah. the music business with samples. Sampling. And, ooh, yeah. uh, what a nightmare that is. Yeah, it gets complicated. But. So, yeah, I guess the future for AI gen... Like, in the, in, the, in the immediate future, whether it's an art show yeah. or anywhere outside of NFTs, it seems people are sensitive about AI-generated sure. art. Yeah. Except for NFTs. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, everybody who joined here today. Appreciate your time, appreciate your effort, appreciate your existence in the community. You let me know, are we ready for more AI generated art? Is it art created by computers, AI? Are you ready for the future? Are you skeptical? Are you scared? Will you buy a new iPhone? Will you live on the dynamic island? Last question of the day. What are you more excited about right now? Smartphones or electric cars? Let me know in the comments. Cool. Later, guys.